your next step after you create a physical version of your storybook would be to go in and to create a digital version. Some of my groups did this. Uh, we created a couple stories, one of them called Tate and Duke. Uh, another one we did about a superhero cat that turned out very well. In these stories, my students actually recorded and created a digital storybook. And what I'd encourage you to do is to take what you've created for your story itself and make a digital version. And I'll show you an easy way to do that. In Canva, when you're signed in with your school account to start, click the presentation button. And you can see down here, if you've used Google Slides before, it's going to organize it with different little tabs that you can create slides with. I'm going to make four. Now, I've given you access to where you can actually go in and select your animal for the story. I'm going to just pick the goat, I think, to start with for our example. And you can see that you can resize that using these tabs. You can click this button and kind of move the angle that the animal is. Since this is going to be a storybook, our first page needs to have kind of a fun background. To do that in Canva, you can click Elements, type in what you want. I'm going to put a castle. And I'm going to click, let's go to Photos. You can also go to Graphics if you want some different types of pictures. And I'm going to click this big castle on a hill. And I'm going to click Set Images Background. So right click that. Click Set Images Background. And I have my goat character here looking at this big castle far away. And I need a title for my story. So to do that, I can go to Text. I can click one of these if I want to. I can go up to this A and change the color of it. And remember for this video, you can scroll backwards, you can rewind, you can pause it and go back and see what I've done to help yourself make your story. I'm going to title my story, Billy the Goat and the Enchanted Castle. And I can make that look however I want it to. I'm going to kind of center it at the top of the page. And that's going to be the first page of my story. So next I'm going to go to right click this and you might press two buttons on your computer you might press the little trackpad with a couple fingers and it pop up pop up with this too i'm going to click duplicate page i'm going to get rid of the title and i'm going to have billy the goat now remember for our stories we had to have a character we had to have setting we had to have a problem and eventually a solution and that's going to create the plot or the actual story part of our story for this i to tell any of that, I'm going to have to have some text. So to do that, I'm going to go up to where it says add a subheading. The best way to make text pop out is to go to where it says effects up here. Click where it says background. Uh, usually I'll put like white behind it and that'll make it kind of pop off from whatever background you have. So I'm going to say uh, Billy was a goat that lived in the village outside a large castle. And this is establishing kind of our setting. Billy lives in a little village outside of a big, let's say, let's use better words, a huge magic castle. So now I've got the text over there. I could duplicate this page. And I could say something on the next page like, Billy always wanted to go inside, but he could never leave the farm he lived in. Let's say lived at. So you see I've got the text for that there. And I can shape it however I want. I can move it around the page. What you're going to come up with is basically we've got our character, we've got our setting, and we've got the problem. Problem. Billy wants to go to this castle, but he can't ever leave the, the farm at the village. He can't get away for any reason. He's just a goat. Now, where this story goes would be up to you. And again, you've already plotted out and mapped a lot of your stories. If you've looked at your story for a while, you remembered, you refreshed what you worked on. Uh, what I want you to be able to do is essentially tell this story step by step. And maybe for this next one, maybe somehow Billy does get inside this castle and 
through uh, some specific set of circumstances, he actually becomes the king of the castle itself. So set images background. I've got a couple other animals here that are maybe also like extremely happy for Billy that he was somehow able to become king. He's hanging out on his throne. I've got a crown. Let's put a crown on his head. We'll resize this. This is a pretty wild ending to our story here, but we've got Billy with an incredibly large crown on his head as the king of this castle. Now, a couple things to make your story kind of fun and pop because you do have this digital platform to do it on. One thing you can do is animate your characters. If you click the character itself, click animate, click create an animation, you can drag that character to move around the page so that when we actually record our story, those characters will move. Uh, you can do that in a variety of ways, but whichever way you do it will make the story a little bit more interesting. Maybe this last one, I've got all these other animals, and they're just kind of like shaking around with joy for Billy. They're super happy that he was able to do his, like actually able to realize this dream, etc. So we've got our story. What I would recommend to do is to kind of preview it first. You can go in and click Present. And it's going to show you if your animations and things that you recorded worked out, like how those did. I would need to go in and fix a couple things, but you get an idea. The last thing you'll do to record your digital story is to actually read into it. Practice your lines, practice the dialogue, practice the text before you read it and record it for real. And then go in, click See All, and click Present and Record. Now, this won't let me do it on my computer because I'm already recording this video at this time, but if you click Go to Recording Studio, it's pretty easy. It'll have a button that you'll just click. It'll record your voice, and you can do it page by page so that you make it sound like you're reading the story to an audience. I hope that you create something cool if you decide to make a digital storybook. There's plenty of other great resources online if you want to get some more tips and tricks. Good luck.